Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at the concept of debouncing. Debouncing is a really useful part of our toolkit because it gives us a way to optimize our code. There are certain actions that a user can perform like scrolling or resizing the browser window, which can really tax our browser's performance. Now just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, here's some simple code that I wrote up. I have a basic HTML file here, and here I have my app.js file linked by the script tag. I've created a paragraph tag here with a whole bunch of lorem ipsum, so we can get a scroll bar in our browser window. And then in my app.js file, I've set up an event listener on the window, and I'm listening for a scroll event. And I've also set up a variable count here and initialized it to zero. So what's gonna happen here is on each scroll event, we're simply gonna log count plus plus to the console so we can see how many times this callback function gets triggered by our scroll event. So let's go to our browser. And here you can see our lorem ipsum. And we have a scroll bar here. And we've initialized our count to zero. Now if I go ahead and start scrolling, take a look in the console and check out how many events are getting fired. So every little step along the way our event is firing. What debouncing is gonna do is it's gonna say, let's minimize the amount of time that this scroll event is gonna fire. Depending on what we're ultimately trying to accomplish, we might not need to fire a scroll event this often. And this can help us to optimize performance on our app. In addition to scrolling and resizing, another common use case for debouncing is when you're creating some autocomplete search functionality like you would have here on Amazon.com. So if I come in the search field here and I start typing a letter, for example, if I type S, a key up event is going to trigger an API call to get back some search results. And if debouncing is used, we can optimize the number of API calls that actually end up getting made by only triggering them when a certain amount of time has elapsed between keystrokes. For example, 200 or 300 milliseconds, let's say. So let's go back to our earlier example where we were listening for a scroll event on the window. So as we have it now, every time that the browser detects a scroll event, we're gonna be incrementing the count and logging that to the console and you can see here how many times it gets triggered. So what we wanna do is we want to debounce this. We don't want it to be triggered so frequently. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just going to take this callback function here and I'm going to abstract that out into its own separate function. So we'll call that function increment count and we'll make it an arrow function and this function is simply going to console.log the count plus plus. And then here as the callback function, we can just put increment count. And if we go back to the browser, we should see it working exactly the same way. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to write the debounce function. And this function is gonna be a higher order function. Now, if you're not familiar with a higher order function, a higher order function is a function that returns a function. So let's go ahead and set that up. We know that we're gonna to need to return a function. We'll make it an anonymous function here. And inside of this function that gets returned is where all of the debouncing is gonna happen. Before we fill out this part of the code, let's take a step back and get a conceptual overview of how we're gonna go about doing this. So with this inner function that gets returned, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a timer and we're gonna do this using the setTimeout method. And as the second argument to the setTimeout function, we're gonna pass the number of milliseconds that we want to elapse before our event is able to re-trigger. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that our event was coming from a keystroke, like a key up event. Once the setTimeout starts, if a key up event happens before the setTimeout has expired, what we're gonna do is we're going to cancel the setTimeout and reset it. So effectively what this is gonna do is it's going to keep resetting the timer as long as events are occurring before the timeout has had a chance to expire. So let's say that we gave the set timeout a wait time of 1000 milliseconds. And as these 1000 milliseconds are counting down, the user keeps interrupting this countdown with keystrokes. Well, every time a keystroke occurs, we're going to reset the timer. And only when the timer has fully elapsed a function call, whatever that may be, whether it's making an API call, or in our case, just logging to the console, 
is only going to occur if the timer has fully elapsed. So now that we have more of a conceptual overview of how to go about debouncing, let's start fleshing out this debounce function. Now the debounce function is going to take two arguments. It's going to take a function, and it's going to take a delay time that we want to pass to our set timeout function. So for example, this is how we're going to go about using debounce. So here you can see that what we want to debounce is this increment count function, right? Because we don't want it to fire on every single event. So increment count is the function that's going to get passed into debounce. Like so. So this increment count function here is going to be this first argument for the function parameter. And the second argument we're passing in is this delay time here. And that's going to be the amount of time that we want to elapse before our event is going to be able to re-trigger whatever function it's assigned to. So for example, we can pass in something like 500 for 500 milliseconds. In debounce, as we said before, it's going to return a function, which we're going to flesh out in a second. So we'll be able to assign the result of passing in increment count to debounce to increment count. So that when we use increment down here, it's now going to be a debounce version of increment count. So within our debounce function, outside of the inner function that's going to get returned, we're going to declare a variable which we're going to call timer. And I'll explain in a minute why we're doing this. But first, let's come into our internal function and let's set up that set timeout. So we're going to use the set timeout method. And set timeout takes a function as well as a delay time. So we'll pass in an arrow function. And the second argument we're passing to set timeout here is the delay time, which is getting passed in here. In this case, which is going to be 500 or 500 milliseconds. And what this set timeout is going to do is it's going to invoke the function that we pass in, in this case, which is increment count. However, since we are setting up the set timeout, that function is only going to be invoked after this delay time of 500 milliseconds here. But here's the thing. If another event occurs before this set timeout has expired, what we want to do is we want to clear the set timeout or essentially reset it so that it starts over again. So that only when this delay time has fully expired will this increment count function actually be triggered. So set timeout, it actually returns an ID. And we're going to assign that ID to be this timer that we set up. And the reason that we set it up out here was because we're going to take advantage of closure. So in other words, after debounce or this outer function has run and popped off the call stack, this internal function is still going to have access to timer. And that's due to this concept of closure. So since we have this set timeout now assigned to timer, if the user triggers an event before this delay time has elapsed, we're going to call clear timeout and pass in that timer. And what that's going to do is it's going to reset this set timeout to start all over again. And this is how we debounce our function or limit the rate at which an event is allowed to re-trigger a function. So now with this in place, we can go back to our browser and see the difference in the console. So right now we have our delay time passed into set timeout being set to 500 milliseconds. So when you see me scroll, if I pause for 500 milliseconds, the increment count function will be triggered and we'll see some new output being logged in the console. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So you can see now we're getting much less data here being logged to the console. To compare, let's go back to the code and let's just pass in zero here instead of 500 milliseconds. And let's go back to the browser. And again, you can see how many events are being logged to the console as we scroll. We can try to go more extreme. We can pass in 1000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second. And now let's go ahead and scroll. And notice that only after I stop scrolling and wait for one second, does a new event get output to the console. And now one more aspect to this is that we might actually want to pass in an argument when we call the debounced increment count function. For example, let's say that we wanted increment count to take an increment amount that we pass in instead of just always doing count plus plus, we could do something like count plus equals the increment amount. And then we could pass it in like this. If we write an arrow function, 
we could then pass in an increment amount like this. Like let's say we wanted to increment by five each time. But the thing is, remember this increment count function is the function that's getting passed in here to debounce. And where it's actually getting called is in here, inside of the function that gets returned. So we can set up this inner function to take in whatever arguments that might get passed in. So we can set it up like this. We can use the rest parameter and pass in the arguments. And then like in this case, we can use the spread operator to spread out those arguments when we pass them into the function. So let's go back to the browser. And remember, we have our set timeout delay time to be 1,000 milliseconds. So what we should see now when we scroll and we pause for 1,000 milliseconds is that count will get incremented by five. So let's scroll, stop, we see a five. Scroll again, stop, see a 10, and so on and so forth. So that's how we can set up debouncing and pass in arguments to the internal function. So in this video, we talked about the idea of debouncing, and we looked at an example of debouncing in JavaScript, and we saw how it can be used to optimize performance when we have a lot of events that are being triggered. Things like scroll events, resizing events, keystrokes, for example. So thanks for checking out this video. If you feel like you got something out of it, please give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time.